And I was in Tokyo last week and quite a week it was, yeah. as you say, the announcement of the new prime minister and the election and we saw stocks obviously depreciate beginning of the week, the yen appreciate and then some dovish comments from policy makers which settled the markets again. I contrast that with when I was in Japan in April. Mm. That's when rates were starting to rise and there was this huge sense of optimism that Japan was entering this golden period uh, after all the decades of deflation. I think now what's happening is the optimism is there, but there's a dose of reality that the path to normalization of monetary policy is going to have some ups and downs, but the overall momentum is positive, and that's creating a great opportunity for overseas investors. Megan, you know better than I will ever know, I'm sure, that uh, what policymakers say before they get in power and then what they say after they get in power, I mean, we've seen dozens of examples on this side of the, of the world, and so to see it in Japan is not a great surprise. Someone who was potentially a hawk uh, is now um, potentially a lot more dovish and is, is wants the Bank of Japan to be a little bit more circumspect in its rate hikes as well. Um, I, I think we, we talk about central bank independence all the time. We always talk about it with a pinch of salt. And, and we, I think we must do, shouldn't we, when it comes to the Bank of Japan, especially given the comments have already been made by the Prime Minister. Absolutely. But I think it's important to understand that under the Kashida administration, obviously there was a huge focus on the new form of capitalism. We've seen corporate profits grow by one and a half times to over 30 trillion yen under the Kashida administration. We don't believe things will be hugely different under the Ishiba administration. You've got to remember, obviously, Kashida was the kingmaker for the appointment of Ishiba last year. So, yes, there's been some talk about tax rises. We actually don't think those will come to pass. We see the yen being somewhere between 140 and 150 to the dollar. That, according to the latest Tankan survey, is where corporate Japan sees corporate profits being sustainable. We must remember we've seen five consecutive quarters of strong corporate profit growth. Mm. That's playing into equity valuations, that's making Japanese equities more interesting for our clients here in the UK and Europe. And obviously we're using the strength of our platform, the equities research. We cover over 600 Japanese corporates, over 900 pan-Asian corporates, um, and it's an environment for stock pickers. We're, mm. seeing, uh, you know, we're seeing a renewed interest from UK and European investors, and, and we believe it's a good time to buy Japan. Megan, before we get into those stocks and some of the areas, let me just ask you about the backdrop still, because you know, I think our European viewers are very familiar with revolving door politics in Italy. And we have this great wall every time there's a new prime minister, we talk about how much change there is. But Japan is a very similar situation. A 102nd prime minister we're talking about here, and we're talking about a prime minister with very low support base. So could we be back to the revolving door type of policy making a uh, politics in Japan again when we get a new prime minister every other week? That may well be. I mean, it's hard to call politics, right? But we do see under the Ishiba administration a continuity and a continuation of some of the core economic policies of the Kashida administration. So, for example, the focus on governance, the improvement and the focus on ROE and the better alignment uh, between shareholders and corporates, uh, better alignment of their interests. That's playing into improving corporate valuations. We see those as fundamental corporate valuations. Um, and so we don't see that policy changing too much going forward. In fact, we see it continuing.